Hey there, welcome to the class. My name is Chuck Fresh. This is week one of Introduction to Voice Acting. So before we get started, let's lay out a few ground rules. First, this is a judgment-free zone. Art is entirely subjective, no matter what any producer or any big companies will tell you. You do you. It says it on my shirt right here. You do you. No one can do you. No one else can do what you do. No one else can sound like you. Your voice is yours. It's unique. It's awesome. And somebody out there loves it. Somebody somewhere is willing to pay you money to use your voice for their project. I don't know where, I don't know when, but it's out there and the most amazing things have happened to some of the people who have gone through my prior classes. So I can vouch that it does happen. Someone's willing to pay you money for your voice, no matter what it sounds like, to use it in their project because it's unique. Number two, there's no dumb questions in this lesson. In the classroom environment or in the comments, you can put whatever you want as far as questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question. There's only people dumb enough not to ask questions. So no one knows everything. I don't know everything, but if I don't know something, I'll find the answer for it. I have people. So ask away. There's no dumb questions, no matter what. Uh, this is an agency-free zone. I'm not a voice talent agency. I don't own one. I don't work for one. I can't do any magical agent voodoo. You know what I mean? You need a really expensive license and an insurance poly policy in the state of Florida. And it's really not my gig. We let the business types handle the type of agency stuff. We let the creative stuff, creative people handle the creative stuff. And it just works out for the best that way. So I'm not an agency. Uh, next, there are no promises. I can't make you any promises. I can't promise you the moon and the stars. I can't say that you're going to make it big. Although some people will, some people do. One of you people taking this course may be the next big thing in voiceovers. You never know. Some will decide, eh, it's not for me. I tried it. It was fun, but I'm going to do something else and make some real money for whatever reason. Like anything else in life, sometimes the stars won't line up for you, but there's a possibility that they will, no matter how talented you are or untalented you are. There's a lot of untalented people who make it, believe it or not. That's just the way it is. It's really up to you and how hard you want to work. Um, another thing I like to tell people is no one else can promise the moon and the stars either. No matter what they put on their internet advertising, they're going to say, oh, I'm going to get you these big jobs. It never works out there. There's no one who can promise you anything in any creative business, unless, of course, they're related personally to Jeff Bezos or... Uh, I don't know, maybe J.J. Abrams, but uh, hey, if you're directly related to them, give me a call. I could use some work. And uh, that's really yeah, That's really the only rules for the class. Pretty laid back, pretty simple. And I'll give you all the information you need to pursue a career as a voice actor. Everything you know, all the basics right here. This is all you will ever need to pursue a career in voice acting. So we'll cover everything in this thing. You'll see over the next couple of weeks. It's pretty comprehensive. Um, so let's ask why? Why are you interested in this career, in this type of acting? Why are you here? Look, I'm going to tell you, I'm happy you're here. It's great to see you. But why are you here? I hear I hear a lot of things a lot. Like a lot of people tell me, well, my mom tells me I have a great voice. Or I can perfectly do that cartoon voice. Or voice actors make millions of dollars. And some do. And a lot of people say, well, it looks like a really easy job. And sometimes it is. I'm not going to lie. All those things are great reasons. And there's at least a little bit of truth to each of those. But there ain't no magic pixie dust in Hollywood, as people who have been to Hollywood will tell you. It's a lot of hard work. And um, it's all smoke and mirrors, man. It's show business. Nothing's real out there. But you've got to ask yourself these three questions before you get started in this type of career. Number one, have you ever sold anything professionally? If you haven't, that's okay, but you're going to need to learn how to do that because this is all sales. It's selling you. It's selling your voice. Number two, do you have thick skin? And I'll tell you why in a minute. And are you willing to practice, 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 practice and work for free probably for a little while? So honestly, voice acting is a lot of work. It's a lot of frustration, a lot of rejection and a constant chase for the same gigs that hundreds or sometimes even thousands of other talented people are chasing too. So as long as you know all this and you have realistic expectations, then, hey, the world is yours for the taking, man. Let's go for it. The barriers are gone. 
You used to have to have a lot of money to be able to go into a studio and create a demo or to do any type of voice acting. That's why so few pe people did it. And a lot of people who did it made a lot of money back in the day. But those var barriers are all gone. You can do this from your home. And with this pandemic scare, it's now encouraged to work from home. And with today's powerful computers and digital audio interfaces, a decent microphone and a little bit of skill, yeah, you can record great sounding voices and even full musical CD tracks that are heard globally and that sound just as good as anything created in a big studio. I used to have a professional studio, but today I work out of a quiet bedroom and my stuff sounds better than ever. A lot of it's running all over the world from New York to Beijing and heard by millions of people every day. So who am I? Who is Chuck Fresh? Well, basically, people pay me to talk. You know, it sounds ridiculous. I mean, you listen to my voice. It's really nothing to write home about, okay? I mean, if everyone are paid to talk, I'm sure I know a lot of people who would be trillionaires right now. I don't even like talking, but I do it for a living. I used to be, let's go back a little bit. I wanted to be a computer programmer when I went to school. That was a, my original major in college. I was a nightclub DJ as I paid my way through college, and I had to speak to announce a lot of uh, contests and specials in the bars and clubs I worked in. A lot of people liked my voice, and eventually I was asked to record radio commercials for the clubs I worked in. Um, so I did that and eventually moved into phone messages and some television commercials for a uh, big business I was working for at the time. And, uh, you know, some movie trailers and things, mostly small voice acting jobs. But eventually my voice stuff became a job. I never really set out to become a voice actor, so I really don't know, to be honest, how someone would pursue that from scratch. But I will teach you everything that I've learned about the voice acting industry so you will be prepared, so you will know how to get there from ground zero because I didn't do it that way. I kind of fell into it. I guess what people tell me set my voice over skills apart is like this really weird vocal range and some pretty, well, I pretty good voice acting skills. I've been told I can cover five or so octaves, whatever that means from like animated squirrels all the way up here to a stunning Morgan Freeman impersonation. I can even go deeper than that in the morning. Apparently that's kind of rare to have that kind of range. A lot of people do. But being a first generation American born kid from a family filled with European immigrants settled in a not so great Philadelphia neighborhood. I had to master a lot of domestic and foreign accents to survive. You had to try to fit in. I had to be like a chameleon so I could sound like everybody else in the neighborhood so I wouldn't get my butt kicked. True story. And, uh, you know, you do what you got to do to survive. And uh, eventually it worked out and turned into a skill. So fast forward a bunch of years. Turns out I've had quite a career in the voiceover business. I've done hundreds of movie trailers for big and small things, radio and television commercials nationwide, worldwide, really. And a whole bunch of international projects recently, too. I've even done a job with the president before he was president. True story. My voice can be heard all over the world, and that's kind of weird. Somebody went to Germany, and she told me she heard my voice in a, um, it was a planetarium out there in Germany, and she kind of freaked her out that she heard my voice in the planetarium in English, obviously, and uh, yeah, that would freak me out too. So along the lines, I took a, I took a few breaks from voiceovers to run a couple of businesses, write some books, and I explored a midlife music career crisis where I recorded about five CDs. So I've done about seven, written about 17 books, five music CDs. So I've done a little bit of everything and uh, I've got a tremendous amount of experience to share in all different types of recording and voicing and everything from commercials to audio books to movie trailers and everything. And we'll talk about some of that stuff here. So what do you need to do to get started? Well, you need to find your voice. And what do you mean find your voice? Well, we all have more than one voice. And I've told you before, all types of voices are in demand now. People want real voices more than announcer voices now. They want real voices. I get more requests for real guy next door voices than I get for anything else. More than character voices, more than the announcer voices, more than the movie trailer voice. I want a guy who sounds like he's talking to me. Like I'm talking to you right now. That's the most in demand voice right now. Strange enough. It'll probably change again within by the time you watch this, but who knows. So whether you're... um Male, female, young, old, you've got a high voice or an old voice, a scratchy voice, an accent or anything. I mean, these things are wanted in commercial voiceover work and acting jobs and YouTube videos. 
the thing about the voice industry, yeah, there's a lot more people doing it, but there's a lot more opportunities. Now you've got YouTube and the private video things. You've got TikTok people who are paying people. You've got a whole bunch of new avenues for voices that you didn't have before. So now you've got more people in the pool, but you've got more opportunities for those people, which is a great thing. Unfortunately, the prices have come down, but it's the market. You can't do anything about it. So if you can sing, that's a plus. If you have some experience acting, that's awesome. If you don't, that's no problem either. If you can't sing, that's no problem because we'll guide you through how to get through and I'll give you a whole bunch of acting tips in this video series, in this classroom. Um, so we talked before we said, you have a whole bunch of different voices. We have like a calm and soothing voice. Most of us have all these voices, right? This is my calm and soothing voice. <clears throat> a cool ocean breeze. A soft wind gently rustling the wavy tips of my hair. Or maybe your concerned voice. Oh, I just realized my feet really smell. I mean bad. I hope no one noticed at the nail salon. Or your angry voice. Mm, I can't believe my stupid brother borrowed my sneakers and walked through all that mud. Or your sad voice. But poor Matt. Oh. All he has is those orange and green clown shoes. And everyone makes fun of him. And it's raining and thundering outside. And I really wanted to go out and play. Or your hero voice. Know what? I'll buy Matt some new shoes. Just like mine. And he'll be able to hold his head up proudly. Or your villain voice. But first, Matt will need to do a few chores for me. My toilet is overflowing and especially dirty this month. <laughs> and more. I'm sure you could think of a whole bunch of different voices you do just in your everyday life. I mean, notice when you're talking, the kind of moods that you go in and how you talk, become self-aware of how you talk during those things. And you'll begin to build a library of those voices that you can pull from in your own repertoire. Do you know what I mean? So let's talk about your read. Uh, no matter what. Use those voices, find those voices, build that repertoire and um, build that library and don't be afraid to pull from it. A lot of people are very, very self-conscious when they're talking to a microphone or when they're doing a script in front of somebody else. You got to get over. That's the first thing you need to get over. I mean, people will admire you for doing scripts. That's what I found. I used to be incredibly self-conscious. I didn't want anybody to hear me. I'd lock in, wait till everybody else was out of the house or out of the studio before I did something. And after a while, my people are like, hey, this is pretty cool. So you build that confidence over time. But I'm telling you, it's really cool that you're doing voice acting and people also will think it's really cool. So your read and your read, you need to just develop that confidence. Just be super confident. I mean, you own the place you're doing this. People want you to do it. And you're the actor now. You're the star. You're the celebrity. If you're not really, truly confident, at least appear confident, not too confident. You don't want to be too cocky because people will hate that. But, you know, like you deserve to be there in that studio, in that situation, recording that script. People like to hang out to with confident people. They want to be with confident people. And it makes them feel better if you're confident. It makes the producer, or director, or the person who hired you feel like they made the right choice. Wow, this person's really got it together. I made the right choice hiring this person. I'll hire them for a lot more. And you see how that kind of snowballs into a career, really. Uh, and just realize that you can do this. You can do this voice acting no matter what. Even if you had the worst day of your career. And you have to walk in and be really happy and talk about flowers and candy with this glowing smile in your voice. You have to be able to do it because you're an actor. This is what you're getting paid to do. Second tip is be in the moment, man. Read the script in advance as many times as you have to. Memorize it if you can and then visualize it. Like Close your eyes and be there. Be in the script. Be those characters. See the other characters and how they interact with you in your mind. And uh, just be prepared afterwards for some crazy director to tell you everything's all wrong and you got to start from scratch. But it's the creative industry, no rules, remember? And you've got to be flexible. There's often a disconnect between the client, the person who wrote the script, the producer, the director, and then you. So things inevitably will change, but you've got to be a jellyfish and go with the flow. And that works out all the time. Sometimes you nail it first time right out of the box. Sometimes it's going to be a long day. It's the gig like anything else. So let's talk about your sound. There's a term in the voice industry and many other industries too. 
That's not a nice term. So a PG slant, let's say garbage in, garbage out, meaning your recorded voice should sound clear, clean, level with very little noise in the background. Unfortunately, it's raining like crazy right outside of my studio here. And it's, I mean, it's almost hailing out there. So you could probably hear that. I hope you don't. But this is the kind of recording you wouldn't want to send to a professional studio because producers can't really work with that noise in the background. There's no way you can take a little bit of noise out if it's continuous and it's the same thing, but it affects the entire track and it's really going to make your producer very angry because they're used to dealing with very clean studio sounds. And now that these people are recording from home, they got to deal with all kinds of stuff, makes their job a lot more difficult. So... For instance, your producer won't want people talking in the background. Or you won't want to hear a TV in the background. Um, probably can't edit out that thunder or the dog barking in the background over that key word that you can't possibly lift from some other part of your script. I mean, it makes things very, very difficult when you've got all these extraneous sounds and noises in your recording. So you don't want those. You don't want to pop your piece. If you pop your piece, and I'm doing that on purpose, it's real hard to take that out, too, because it just makes this really nasty, overbearing sound that producers can't filter out. And it's just useless. And they're going to have to call you back in and do it again. And nobody wants to do that because you usually don't get paid for coming back in. Um, also, make sure your volume is kind of level. So it's not real quiet in one part and then real loud in the next part. They want a nice level audio and don't bang your microphone like that they hate that too that won't work out too well uh and also if it sounds like you recorded your voice on your smartphone on your smartphone you're gonna hear a whole bunch of echoes and those are because those are omnidirectional microphones and they pick up everything in the room including all the echoes and they don't want that kind of echo so that, that sign of sound that like really bad sounds going to be useless to everybody it's not going to be good for your career it's not gonna be good for you it's going to get everybody mad you probably won't get paid so your real your, your goal is to get a professional quality sounding product and there's a couple things you need to know number one studio time is expensive but again recording at home is now considered doable and completely legit you're going to need a microphone and like a pretty decent microphone too like a professional microphone we'll talk about that in your minute it's really your tool it's your weapon and it is pretty important you'll need a way to get the audio signal that you're making, the analog signal from your voice into the microphone into your computer. So you're gonna need an analog to digital converter. We'll talk about that in equipment too. And you'll need at least a tiny bit of audio editing skills too. You don't have to be like a professional producer, but just enough to cut out the stuff you don't wanna to send to the studio. If you said some bad words or tripped on something, you need to redo something, you want it to look like a, a total noob, you just want to cut a lot of that junk out and just send them the good stuff. You don't want them to have to filter through all that crazy stuff too. So we'll look at that as well later on when we do equipment and uh, audio recording software. And you'll need a pretty quiet room. This room's pretty quiet for the most part. I do have a ceiling fan on now. And it, again, it's raining like crazy out there, but if you listen, it's pretty quiet. You want a room that's kind of away from your laundry room, away from the dishwasher or any type of motor because they make this nasty sound that actually sometimes dances with the harmonics of your voice. So you don't want that in your recording because the engineer can't pull it out. You don't want to hear a, a television or outside traffic or dogs barking or birds chirping. Sometimes that's inevitable. Sometimes you don't have the resources or the situation to find a quiet inside room, but there are other ways to do it too. You can work inside of a closet. A lot of people do that to dampen a lot of the outside noise. I've even recorded inside my car in the garage. True story to get some quiet because I couldn't get enough quiet in the house. I had a pretty picky client, so I was able to get in the car and record a couple tracks and it worked out perfectly with a laptop. So those are other important considerations too we'll talk about when we go to equipment. All right, microphones. I mean, this is your tool. This is the most important thing. This is my microphone, my favorite microphone. I have probably 15 microphones ranging in price from as little as 10 bucks all the way up to several thousand. So, so you need to know a little bit about microphones. So I'll tell you some of the basics now, and then we'll go over this in a couple of weeks when we talk about equipment. Dynamic microphones. That's what this one is. It's, it's better for punchy and loud sounds. 
it can handle you yelling into it without completely blowing up the sound and making it all distorted. Um, they require no external power. And if some of your projects are involve screaming, like in video games or in some uh, some radio podcast too, where you get a little crazy and you just want to yell a lot, a dynamic microphone can save you a whole lot of grief. There's condenser microphones and the industry says they're better for vocals because they pick up a little more of the essence of your voice through harmonics. They have a bigger range of things, a bigger range of sounds they can pick up. The trade-off is they capture a lot of background noise too. You're going to hear everything that goes on in the room, um, fans, air conditioners, everything. It's going to be a lot noisier and they require a power source too. So you're going to need to up your ante and your audio to digital thing. You're going to need a, an adapter of some sort and you may not be as portable. A lot of these things don't have batteries. So you'll need some kind of power source for your microphone. It's not always convenient. Um, honestly, and I get in trouble for saying this all the time, but it's the truth. A lot of the beauty that the condenser microphones capture, a lot of those extra harmonics and a lot of that extra, those extra vocal sounds, they're lost in mixing in digital file compression. By the time you add some sound effects to it and you do your normal audio mixing and then you upload it to YouTube or wherever it is, it's going to be compressed. And they chop off like a whole giant section of the top of that equalization, probably where those beautiful sounds were. And you're right back to where you were with a dynamic microphone anyway. So you can argue that with your studio, but don't bother. If you can afford to do a condenser and have a really cool studio, great. If you can't, you can do a lot of really cool things with a dynamic microphone too, an upper end dynamic microphone. Again, we'll talk about that when we talk about equipment. Um, pickup patterns. We need to talk about pickup patterns. What does your mic pick up? This particular microphone is called a cardioid pickup pattern. So it captures sound from mostly in front and then a little bit in the side. You can see the curves in the uh, display here in the, uh, the, the artwork here. So it captures mostly from the front and a little bit to the sides. So you can hear it's coming a little bit from the side, but mostly it's coming from the front. And if you go behind it, you hardly hear anything. And that's the beauty of this is going to cut out a lot of the echo and a lot of the other room noise that you don't want from behind the microphone. So you definitely want to go with cardioid. Most of the professional microphones are going to be cardioid. There's omni pattern microphones too. Omni means all over the place. It means it's going to try to capture sound from all around it. And in most cases in voice acting situations, you really don't want that unless you're doing like this group project with a whole bunch of people in the room and everybody wants to be heard equally in that case you might want an omni but in most cases you're going to stick with a cardioid pickup pattern there's other ones too but for the scope of this thing we're just going to cover cardioid and omni and uh really that's all you need cardioid dynamic microphone you're off to the races and you're in business that's what i'm using right now and it sounds great all right let's talk about your demos the most important thing you can do as a voice actor is fine-tune your demos and it's not a one and done process so what's a demo Demo is short for a demonstration recording. They used to be called demo tapes, but we haven't used tapes in a decade, so there's no more tapes. So it's just a demo. It's been shortened demo. Your demo should showcase the best work you've ever done, which means you're going to constantly update those demos. You should constantly update your demos. A lot of us don't like we should, but if you as a new voice actor, you definitely want to update those with your best work the best stuff you've ever done the stuff you get the most compliments on the stuff the studios are happy with the stuff your clients are happiest with and not necessarily in your opinion what you think might be your best work might not be commercially your best work and you really want the commercial stuff because that's what sells that's what pays the bills um and you might not know that up front you'll begin to recognize that as you progress so you'll want to constantly tweak what you want your potential clients to hear my honestly my first demos first like years demos were train wrecks and no i won't let you hear them like ever so what do you need in a demo you need a little bit of this a little bit of that it's like cooking and when i say a little i mean a little i'm talking 10 15 second clips these people put these five minute demos together nobody listens to that anymore nobody has time with this digital environment you don't have to pop a tape in and play and wait for something to come along you're just going to click i want to hear this five seconds of this guy doing this voice or this girl doing this character and that's all i want to hear 
Just play me that. So they need to be sure. A little means a little. As customized as possible for the gig. So if you're doing an animation demo, you want to do some animation voices. You don't want to send them your commercial voice because it's irrelevant and that's not what they're looking for. And you're not going to get the gig because everybody else is saying out a customized demo. And you're going to expect, just expect to read a lot of demos for free without getting paid for it. All the demos are pretty much free. All your auditions are going to be non-paid. But you look at it this way. You're building up your library of demos and you're also practicing and rehearsing while you're reading all the scripts too. So auditioning is a great thing, man. It's uh, the number one way a lot of people really build their craft by auditioning a lot. Uh, change them constantly, as we said before, and always put your best first. Like if you're doing a short animation demo, 15, 30 seconds tops, you want to put your best first. Back in the day, a lot of people say, well, just build up to it. Just let them know all your stuff's good. It's good. But at the end, there'll be this big zapper. We'll make them pick up the phone and call you. But no, that doesn't work anymore. You want to put your best first because you may not be able to get to the end. That person who's listening to it is very busy. They're not going to be able to get to the end of your demo. So put your best stuff first, like nail it right out of the gate. So we'll talk more about demos, too. We've got a, a lesson on demos and we'll really get into it then what should be on your demo will help you actually create your first demo all right the gigs the voiceover gigs so what's a voice acting gig like well this is where most voice acting classes sugarcoat things and tell you all these fairy tales like oh it's gonna be great you're gonna walk in and people are gonna line up and they'll roll out the red carpet and you'll be a star and people paparazzi will be all over the place taking no it's not gonna happen i'm not gonna sugarcoat no fairy tales I'm going to tell you the truth. Believe me, you're going to thank me later because there's nothing like walking into a, a war zone when you're more prepared for a nice day at Disney World. You know what I'm saying? So you've got to be ready for it. So most professional voice actors work in a professional offsite studio. Today, it's becoming more common to work at home. And there's a bunch of ways that working at home will go down. So you may work from home, like record from home in your home studio with your with your mic, I keep hitting it with your dynamic mic, your um, your cardioid dynamic mic from home, undirected. Meaning they give you the script and say, hey, do your best. Give me a couple of reads and show me what you can do with this thing. Or you may record from home directed via a phone patch. So your director, or your client may be on your phone and you'll be listening and you'll just put your phone on speaker and you turn it down. Hopefully they won't yell and make noise that will be recorded. And you'll start to read the script. Well, this is a script in a world in a place, in a time. And they'll say, no, 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 Chuck. I want you to do it this way. I want you to change the cadence. There's a beat here, step, slow it down, speed it up, whatever. So they'll be listening while you're doing this and you can record the track and then you send them the final product with the right clips and cuts that they want. Or you send them the whole thing and they're making marks and notes, whatever they do. A whole bunch of different ways. You really got to work with your producer, figure out how you want to do that. We'll cover a lot of that later. You can record via home uh, uh, via something called an ISDN line. And those are becoming more and more of a dinosaur now because a lot of phone companies won't install them or they're discontinuing. But there's an online internet ISDN equivalent now, which should have been around for a long time. But I don't know even why ISDN still around, but a lot of people still have these lines. So you may be asked to do it. Um, or another option, a lot of people who use ISDN have switched to something called Source Connect. And this is another internet way of sending your voice over in a high quality format over the internet and source connects becoming a lot more common now i'm seeing that in a lot more studios than isdn I'm starting to move away from isdn more in the source connect and other types of digital connections um that uh even a lot of the professional late night shows are working out too they're using a lot of these things like source connect and a digital isdn so that's pretty cool stuff um Again, those could be directed or not directed sessions, but in most cases, they're going to be directed because you're on line digitally with the studio. So the producer director is going to be sitting there and talking back through your headphones, which they can't hear on the microphone, and they record the session as you go, and you're recording a backup too. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on too. Or you might be like a professional in the studio on location with a director and a producer and people yelling stuff in your ear. So it's really super exciting. I mean, the first time you walk in a studio, you're like, whoa, I made it. This is the coolest thing in the world. So if you're going to like free soda and snacks, right? And you're going to feel guilty. Like, are those sodas for me? Well, they're for the client, but the talent can have them too. You can have some coffee. Here's some donuts. We'll bring lunch in around one o'clock. 
man, it's like you just walked into heaven. It's the coolest thing in the world. You're going smiling faces. Everybody wants to shake your hand and meet you, although we don't shake hands. We elbow bump now. And really comfortable chairs in this really beautiful waiting room. And you walk into the studio and you're like, oh, all these flashing and blinking lights. It's just the coolest thing in the world. It really is. It's really hard to explain. You really have to do it. Um, it's nice. I mean, it's cool. It's like a dream come true. But like anything else, it can become a boring drag. And here's that how that happens. If you're a newer talent, you're probably going to be sandwiched with some lower level director, maybe an assistant or second assistant or whatever, who's trying to look good for his boss, the full director or the clients. So even if you know, you know, in your heart, you nailed that voice over script, that acting script the first time through, you know, you nailed it. You know, you did exactly what you're supposed to do. It's not going to be good enough. Expect to read that script. 20 times in the worst case scenario maybe 50 to 100 times i'm not kidding i've been in these situations okay can you read that again can you read that again you read that again i need a drink oh my god my throat's starting to hurt and the first five times you'll be able to deal with you know what this is cool i'll read it again okay can you hit that for me one more time maybe accentuate this way this word or pick up the pace or something but you'll have an attitude by the six three believe me as a new person you're like what is wrong with these people? Why are they making me read this thing? I know I nailed it the first time. What, what are you not hearing? Are you deaf? But you can't say that. You can't think it. As a professional voice talent, you have to be in it to win it. You have to do it over. You're, no, walking in, you might have to read that script 50 times. And there's no way you're going to get away with one read. There's this, just an unwritten rule of the industry. Nobody walks out on one take. So at times... It can seem like torture. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's, and if the producer or director doesn't like you, say like they fired his best friend who was the voice actor before you, <laughs> they couldn't agree on price. And then you come in and you're taking his or her friend's job and they're going to have a tune with you too. And they're going to make it torture. So it happens like any other business is good and bad. And you just got to weigh it out and be ready for both and just hope for the best. Most of it's not going to be like that, but it can happen. And I need to let you know that it can happen. In most directed sessions, they're going to be yelling directions at you that if you're a trained voice actor, if you've done stage work, you'll probably understand some of this stuff. If you've done some TV work, you'll know it. But um, if you're new at this thing, your first couple of gigs, you're going to be like, you're already going to be nervous and insecure and you're not really going to be listening 100% because you're too worried about am I standing right? Am I breathing right? Am I reading this right? Am I tripping over my words? Am I mispronouncing this? So you really have to take a deep breath. And ask to take a break. Say, hey, can I take five minutes, walk out? I'm going to use the facilities or whatever and just breathe in. They'll tell you things like, hey, use this cadence. And they'll be like, boom, 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 boom. And you just try to put that in your head and then read like that. Boom, 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 boom. They might say, take a beat. He might want you to ad lib a little. It happens. And ad libbing is a new voice talent is terrifying. You don't know what to say. You're going to say the wrong thing and make somebody mad and lose the job. You don't know these people. You don't know what is funny. You don't know what's relevant. You may not know the industry. Imagine being asked to do like a, a <laughs> this is the worst case scenario, and I'll get in trouble for saying this because I always do, but imagine you're doing like this cancer medication and they never ask you to add, but imagine they ask you to ad lib something. What are you going to say? You know, you're going to say there's like nothing great to say in that type of situation, but maybe life insurance. Hey, can you ad lib something? What are you going to say about life insurance? You're talking about insurance that pays people money when people die. I mean, how do you do anything with that? It probably won't happen, but it can. And I'm going to prepare you for that. What are you going to do? What are you going to say? And just get you in that mind. So, hey, Chuck told me about ad-libbing. I might be asked to ad-lib. Now it'll be in the back of your head and be like, oh, well, this didn't hit me from left field. Now I kind of know what to do here. So that's the whole purpose of taking a class to kind of be ready for the next impossible potential situation right so they're going to ask you all kinds of things in the studio they're going to ask you to reread and go through all this stuff and it's really cool and sometimes it's great sometimes it's not and the cool thing about it is you may get to hear your voice all over the world all over the country all over your city all over your, the universe man this thing's floating out in the space right now your voice is going out in space you never know broadcast never dies it just goes just keeps going so it's really cool once you hear it and once you hear the finished project a lot of these guys do some really really cool magic in the studio which will blow your mind too and 
you can add it to your demos and your resume and build it up and then build a career. Before you know it, you're making big bucks and you're sitting in your home studio in your pajamas recording commercials for life insurance companies. I don't know, whatever. So, right. People ask me this all the time and we'll get into this the next couple of things when we talk about the business of voicing in a couple of weeks from now. What will I get paid as a voice actor? Well, it's a pretty wide range and it's a wild world. If your union is kind of like stated, like a flat rate, but very few people get to do voiceovers as union anymore, especially right out of the gate if you're new, if you're a new voice actor. But um, it's nice. It's nice having the union benefits, the union scale. It's really cool. I'm not going to lie. But if you come right out of the gate as a new person, you don't know anybody and you're going to do union, you're not going to work. That's just the nature of the beast. You know what I mean? But... If you're non-union, you probably won't make as much per gig. You definitely won't make as much per gig, especially starting out. And the other side of that is you'll score a lot more work, so you'll make up with it with volume, which is great as a new person because you want to build up your resume, your demos, and your experience. And again, the best way to do that is to audition and to work. So there's no set prices. There's no law saying you have to pay a voice over this much money. It's all contract work. You're working as your own business. You're an independent contractor. So there's no protection. There's no health insurance. There's no nothing really. There's no real organizations to handle this kind of thing. We were thinking about starting one, but it's a headache, man. And, um, I don't know. We'll look at some of the benchmarks. I mean, there are some benchmarks. There's some minimums you can ask for. And uh, some popular prices in the voiceover world. And we'll go through that when we go through the business section. So the business, how will I get work? Well, easy there. Pull back on the handle a little bit. Let's master the craft first to make sure you're ready with the best possible demo you can make. And make sure this is what you want to do. And make sure you can, they say, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. That has nothing to do with this, but you know what I'm saying. You got, if it's not for you, it might not be for you. You might go through the first couple of lessons and be like, mm, man, this is too hard. I don't want to do this. Or you might say, this is it. This is the, my dream job. This is always what I wanted to do. This is what I was born to do. Um, so, yeah, we're going to create the best possible demo you can make. We're going to tell you how to do that. And in the last few lessons, we'll go through the business end of things. So you'll know what the payment is. How do you get work? What's the best way to go about this stuff? How does the industry work? Blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, all right. I got to tell you some of the negative stuff too, because I have to be comprehensive and complete, right? You want the truth, right? All right. So voiceless trailers, movie trailers, really a lot of people aren't using voices for movie trailers anymore. The big companies moved away from it when Don LaFontaine died because they were paying like $5,000 a trailer. He passed away rather than replace him. You're like, you know what? We're all going to shake hands and we're just not going to use voices anymore. We'll save 5,000 bucks. So voiceless trailers. Now, a lot of people do hire me to do trailers for smaller projects or older school type projects. And that's cool. I mean, it's out there. So if you're a guy and you do it, there's a lot of women do voice trailers too. So, and a lot of book trailers, that's a big thing now too. A lot of people doing book trailers and you might get some work, score some work for that. There's audio books, all kinds of stuff, stuff that uh, wasn't there before this there now. So that's a good thing. A-listers, you know, what gets my goat is when you hear people like Brad, Pitt and these other actors doing animated movies. I mean, like, dude, you don't have enough money in the bank that you got to sit here and do this cartoon where people can't even see your beautiful face. My question is, would people really go to a movie more because Brad Pitt's voice in it? I mean, would you even know? Oh, I love Brad Pitt, but he's not going to be in it just his voice. So I just want to sit there for an hour and a half and listen to Brad Pitt's voice. I some focus group somewhere said yes. So what do I know? But that is a trend. A lot of these A-list guys are stealing a lot of the animated work and it's not cool and I don't agree with it, but it is what it is. They got to make more money. You need to make that Lambo payment. You know what I mean? Siri and friends. That's an issue. Right now it's not because these digital voices, these fake voices, they still sound like robots. They still sound like crap, but they're getting better every day. You're getting a little bit closer. They're modeled on human voices. I mean, look at 10 years back, Siri, what she sounds like today, and the Google voice, and Alexa, and all these voices. They, they're they pretty good, considering what robot voices used to be. And we wait another 5, 10 years from now, they're going to figure out the enunciation and the tone and the emotion, and they're going to model this on our voices because people like me are actually programming these things right now. One of the projects I'm working on, and um, 
<laughs> we're sealing our own fate, but hey, it pays the bills, man. So uh, that is a trend to keep your eye on these fake voices, synthetic voices, they call them. They're coming. They're coming. There's nothing we're going to be able to do. stop. Synthetic actors are coming, too. That's even scarier. So you won't need faces anymore. You'll be able to build whatever face you want. And I got some theories on that, too, but that's another thing. Competition is growing. A lot of radio DJs are out of work. So a lot of these people have consolidated. And um, what used to be these normal radio shifts run by one person in one city are now like one person for like five, ten cities through something called tracking. So that's a whole different development, which casts all these people who have great voices and a lot of experience reading are now in the voiceover market competing for the same dollars you are. So competition is growing and businesses are trying to DIY now. Now they're looking for this everyday voice. They're like, well, Bob works as a sales guy at this car dealer. He's an everyday guy. So now they're putting Bob in their commercials and some people say it works. Some people say it doesn't. I think they sound terrible, but hey, I don't pay the bills for those things. So that's one of the things you need to look out for, too. And hopefully you will be able to go to your local car dealer and say, hey, don't let Bob do this. Let me do it. I'm a new up and coming voice actor and I'm about to buy a car. My parents are about to buy a car here. So maybe you could put me in a commercial and, you know, we can, you know, help each other out a little bit. So those are the basics. Uh, I know we covered uh, 40 some minutes of stuff here. It's a lot to digest and we'll go into these things in detail over the next couple of weeks. But hopefully I've given you a good sense of what the job and industry are all about, what to expect in some situations. The, we'll talk about the equipment you can use, the software. We'll do a little bit of editing and some really cool stuff. It's going to be a really comprehensive course and... Um, it's great stuff. It's a lot of fun. I love the job. I think you're going to love it too. And um, I look forward to working with you. So if you have any questions, remember, no dumb questions. Put them in the comments and uh, I will get to them during the week. And uh, again, if I don't know something, I'll find the answer for you. My name's Chuck Fresh. I'll see you for week two.